Pope Charles V, the last universal emperor, his tutor Adrian, the last universal pope. At 17, Charles instituted a Burgundian government in Spain that was little better than foreign rule. His grandfather, Emperor Maximilian, died in 1519 and Fuga Finance secured the election of Charles. In 1520, he returned to Antwerp. The joyous entry conveyed in tableau and performance the mutual balance between ruler and wealth producer. The humiliation of overtaxed Ghent, a harbinger of the Eighty Years' War. Albert Dürer had been Maximilian's court painter and came to Antwerp to secure his position with Charles. He portrayed Erasmus, his hero, twice. Dürer's knight inspired by Miles Christianus. Erasmus was 53 when Charles became emperor and the inspiration of enlightened Europeans hoping for church reform. When rumour spread that Luther was dead, Albert Dürer wrote in his journal, O oh Erasmus of Rotterdam, where will you be? In 1521, when Luther left Worms unrepentant, Charles' edict essentially declared war on Protestantism. Five challenges faced young Charles. Rebellion in Spain, France in the West, the Turks in the East, Lutheran heresy and hostility from the Pope. Charles returned to Spain in 1522, learned the language and stayed seven years. Spanish power was harnessed for the House of Habsburg. In 1525 at Pavia, the French were crushed and Francis taken captive. In 1526, Suleiman the Magnificent's victory at Mohacs had three consequences. Louis, King of Hungary, was killed and Charles' sister Mary widowed. The Ottoman threat to Europe inclined the Catholics to forbearance, facilitating the rise of Protestantism. Ferdinand replaces Louis in Bohemia and Hungary, the third of Maximilian's empire-making marriage contract. In 1527, Charles marched against the Pope. Mutinous soldiers inflict unspeakable slaughter and Pope Clement denies a divorce to Henry VIII, propelling England towards Protestantism. In 1530, Charles becomes the last emperor crowned by the Pope. In 1531, Ferdinand is crowned King of the Romans at Aachen, heir to the Empire. Charles is introduced to Titian by the Gonzaga Dukes of Mantua and showers him with honours. Titian's genius is to portray the essence of a person. Pope Paul III and his nipote, 19-year-old cardinals, disillusioned, worldly and sly. Unlike Philip ensconced in the Escorial, disliked and speaking only Spanish, Charles constantly crisscrossed Europe, was multilingual and affable, even playing his organ in an olive grove before the inconsequential capture of Tunis. Though quickly retaken, Tunis inspired his illegitimate son, Don John of Austria, to victory at Lepanto 36 years later. In 1543, Henry joins Charles in a fruitless, financially wrecking French campaign. England's currency is devalued, Spain's debt builds towards a bankruptcy that even the wealth of Pizarro and Cortes couldn't prevent. In 1545, the Council of Trent is convened by Emperor and Pope. The Protestant Schmalkaldic League is founded in 1546. 12,000 papal troops join Charles to crush them at Mulberg. The Emperor's fortunes change rapidly. At Augsburg in 1551, the Habsburgs split, as Charles fails to make Philip the successor to Ferdinand. France ally with the Protestants in January 1552 and take Metz, Toul and Verdun. The Protestant princes chase Charles over the Alps in spring. Ferdinand immediately signs the Peace of Passau, ratified as the Peace of Augsburg three years later. 
In order to salvage his hegemony, Charles marries Philip to Mary Tudor in 1554 and begins his abdication. In the set piece at Brussels, leaning on young William the Silent, whom Philip later has assassinated, he delivers a dismal assessment of his failure to dominate Europe, blaming his opponents and my pitiful state of health. His friend Titian prepares two paintings, Gloria and Echihomo. At Just, Charles waits for his statues, discovers the Inquisition have arrested Leone's son, and dies without ever seeing them. In the watershed decade when humanist hope gave way to persecution. <laughs>